Hello sweet friends and welcome back to our kitchen. So last year we made these videos and you guys loved them and so Bunky and I are going to make them again this year. I'm like grinning ear to ear because I feel like these videos are the most special to us because I feel like I get to like know you guys so much more and read all about you and your family and the recipes that mean a lot to you and then we get to cook those and try them for ourselves. So today we are making your Thanksgiving dessert recipes. Now this first recipe I don't even know know if it's actually a dessert. Bunky swears to be up and down that he would consider this a dessert. It's a hybrid. You see sweet potato casserole. Once you put um, brown sugar and marshmallows on it, is it really still a side dish? Or yeah, is it could it, be either. It's just like a sweet treat going along with right. that turkey so, and gravy. Yeah, so this could be either a side dish or a dessert. So this first recipe comes from Mandy and she lives in upstate South Carolina. Her hometown is very close to Bunky and I's hometown. She says that she's been married to her husband Brian for 23 years. They have four beautiful children, one boy and three girls. She has one daughter in love, a grandson, and she is expecting a granddaughter in January. She says God has been good to us and I would agree. I'm so excited for y'all. I know you're going to be like beside yourself this Christmas that you're going to have a new granddaughter coming in January. She says that this recipe is a family favorite. Every year my daughters and I cook the entire entire Thanksgiving meal for our extended family and it's one of her very favorite things. She says that this recipe is included every single year and she hopes that we get the chance to make it and that Bunky and I will find it as delectable as they do and let me just say my Bunky has been looking so forward to this recipe so I know it's going to be delicious. So she says to grab a 9 by 13 and to preheat your oven to 350, which I did. And then to peel and slice our sweet potatoes, we're going to do three of them. Um, this one's kind of small, so we have like two bigger ones. And Bunky already peeled them, so we're going to slice these into like little medallions. Oh, I thought we were needing uh, cubes. No. Oh, we need medallions. Yeah. Okay. So we're going like to layer them. She says peeled and sliced. So in my mind, that was like little medallions. Yeah? Yeah, sliced not diced. Okay. And I don't know about you, but I think like, not that they should be too thin, but I like a thinner because I think they'll cook uh -huh. more evenly that way. Soften up yeah. real nice. Like quarter. Oh, that's perfect. Quarter, quarter inch. Don't slice my finger. Basically like this thickness. Now while Bunky finishes slicing those, I'm going to make like our sugar mixture that's going to go on top. She says two cups of sugar in that's basically what I have left in this jar, so I'm just gonna pour it out. <laughs> and then we're gonna add two tablespoons of flour, and then like half a teaspoon each of ground ginger and cinnamon. I kinda like a little more cinnamon, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. <laughs> and he's got our sweet potatoes all perfect, the exact same size. I know without measuring Bunky that every single one of these is the same. <laughs> I'd say they're, uh, they're all within about an eighth of an inch of each other. That's right. Um, and this is a lot of sweet potatoes. Are we doing like a, a like a layer, like almost like all gratin? Yes. I was going to do it and I was like, no, because Bunky's going to love it. It's going to be like so precise. <laughs> this is fun. This is uh, fun to me. You like get enjoyment out of this. See, I like this because I feel like it's gonna be a really beautiful presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm just going to mix up our sugar, cinnamon, ginger flour mixture really good. And then we're just going to sprinkle this entire thing over top of our sweet potatoes. I would say with all the sugar bunky, this actually, I would almost consider dessert. I know. It's almost like uh, you you could have just used regular potatoes with all the sugar, right? Like two cups of sugar? And we're about to put two sticks of butter on here. Oh, that, <laughs> that looks so nice. Is this not wild? And then once that pie crust get on top of there. Yeah, we got pie crust growing on top of here. Now I have one and a half cups of water here. And then to that, we're gonna add in one tablespoon of vanilla. I'm gonna eyeball it. <laughs> a little more for good measure. Okay, kind of just mix that up. And then we're gonna pour this over top of our potatoes as well. That's gonna turn into the most delicious liquidy syrup, sugar, this is wild. Oh, no. I'm gonna a little bit more so I can finish this right here. <laughs> Melt butter and pour on top, reserving a little bit to brush on the pie crust. So basically put, you know, the majority of that on here. Okay. This is two cups of butter and Bunky's gonna put like, basically all of it but a couple tablespoons. 
By the way, this just smells good. Oh my goodness. You know what I mean? Well, this is like the magic that goes on top. This is why Bunky said this has to be a dessert because there's pie crust on it. But you're going to get a refrigerated pie crust and we're going to cut this into strips. And she says to do a weaving pattern on top. Bunky says he doesn't know if we're like <laughs> good enough to like do that. We, we have never dabbled with, uh, you know... <laughs> We've never been big crocheters. We've never weaved anything before. I'm, I'm not sure about our crafting skills, you know, confidently enough to uh, to have a successful pie weave, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try, and it might just be our own little Bunky design on top. <laughs> yeah, that's what we should do. It's gonna be beautiful. We way. should spell out Bunky with the pie crust strips. <laughs> but first things first, we gotta just get this out of here and cut it into tiny little strips. Cool. Should we let this like sit out for a second? Yeah, I probably needed to kind of warm. You know what? I'm going to let this thaw for just a few minutes before we do this part. I only have half a pie crust. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, I think we're going to need that uh, second one. Oh, I see what you did. You see what I did there? I see what you did. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Now, we need to probably work with this while it's uh, still a little chilly. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't want like full coverage. We want some gaps in there, right? For it to kind of bubble through. I think so. So, my thought... Oh, you probably. <laughs> and this is why you never worked at Domino's. Bunky is going to be like, you cannot do this because you know, I can't get a straight line. <laughs> but I do think, now this is three different widths. So when I say this, this width, I mean somewhere around here, okay? Let me help you out, sister. Okay, I'm just going to leave a little strip right there. Then you, you know, cut them perfect. Oh. I'm right. telling you, it's hard to get it perfectly straight. Yeah, these, these pizza cutters run on you. That was good. I think I have an idea of like how to do this, okay? Oh, I think I have an idea too. Is it the same as mine? What if you um like you lay it across like and then like lay them across here? Uh-huh. It, but like hanging out this way and then you can just like fold over lay and like fold over and lay and fold over and lay See, I feel like that's a little bit different or like difficult. <laughs> this is going to be a trial and error. Okay, so like if you do it like every Little bit does this make sense then when you lay it this way, it will be a weave you think it's gonna work out or no I'm really not sure <laughs> <laughs> I thought if I do it like this, then, then you do another one here after this layer We a weave is like where you have no, I know because then there's gonna be one here, so it's gonna be weaved. What? You see? It, it's gonna. Uh, that's gonna give us the appearance of a weave. Yeah. <laughs> that's not. A, that's not a weave. That's not the weave Mandy was going for. I don't think. Y'all. But we're gonna weave it. If you know how to weave. <laughs> Get it. We're gonna weave it. Yeah. We're gonna weave it how it is. We're gonna weave it how it is. If you know how to do this, or you have, you know, tips and tricks, we are all ears. But hey, that's all the pie crust. We have. We're gonna, well, we can cut this one into one more strip. But we need another, we need like way more. We're gonna get the other pack crossed out. Friends, that is as good as it's getting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we tried our hardest. It's, uh, it's rustic. This is rustic. I, I actually think it really brings this spirit of Thanksgiving to the table. I try to do kind of like a, you know, plaid look, which to yeah. me reminds me of Thanksgiving. Okay, all there's left to do is just brush some butter right on top. Just doused this bad boy in some butter. This is going in the oven for one hour at 350 and it's gonna be done. Very simple. I feel like this is a recipe. I haven't tasted it yet, but I feel like we're gonna wanna like actually make this for our family. I can't explain to you how good it smells. <laughs> Uncovered? Yep. Now, Bunky made me promise that I would let this cool off for like 10 minutes before <laughs> we jumped into it, but we cannot wait any longer. We stuck ours under the broiler for just a minute to kind of like crust up this top. And then now that we've pulled it out, it really kind of, what's the word? Um, I don't want to say congealed, but that's kind of what it did. Like, yeah. When it was in there cooking, you know, I kept turning the oven light on and, and taking a peek at it. And I knew that that sugar, water, butter concoction was going to turn into basically, it kind of started as a syrup 
And then now I feel like it's really turned into like almost like a beautiful pie filling. Yes, agreed. Go Where are you gonna get it from? Right here. Okay. Oh, right through that potato. That potato is so tender. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow is right. That that syrup, that that sugary, buttery syrup is just gonna mm -hmm. be whoa, bunk. Crazy. Oh my gosh. Dessert or side dish? <laughs> it's interesting because no, this is definitely I would I would categorize as just a dessert. Okay. I never knew that uh, vegetables could become a dessert. Those sweet potatoes are so tender. The pie crust on top, some parts of it, because we did turn the brewer on for just a second, have a little bit of texture, almost give, giving it, I'm not gonna say crunch, but like a little bit more toothsome. Yeah. Yes. If you put a little bit, cause you know, obviously you're gonna have a can of whipped cream or, or something around. Oh yeah. Put some whipped cream on this or some vanilla ice cream. Ooh. And you have a showstopper. Now something I wanna say is that anytime I ever eat sweet potatoes, I eat them like the savory way. Like I always do like a salt and pepper, cayenne, paprika, that's how I like my sweet potatoes. So I'm so excited to try this because I feel like I never eat them in their like sweet form. I know, right? Mandy wasn't playing. Bon for you. That's so good. Holy cow. Okay. First of all, y'all know I don't have that much of a sweet tooth. Like, obviously, like, I like more salty savory. I would gobble up every bit of that 9 by 13 That is how good this is. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like having a cinnamon roll funnel cake on top of amazing buttery soft sweet potatoes yeah that, i don't know how else to say it it's literally one of my favorite thanksgiving recipes i've ever tried hands down mm -hmm. like it's it's that good yeah this is fantastic this is a must try recipe mandy thank you so much for sending this in we will be making this on our thanksgiving table for our friends and family now for this next recipe we are making a pecan pie dip and this comes from emily and she sent me the video for this and i watched it and immediately i was like bunky we're making that like it is happening she says hey bunkies well i can't take credit for this recipe because i found it on tiktok it is delicious i made it for a work goodie day and there was none left i served mine with graham crackers and sliced apples it was so good and surprisingly not too sweet i was worried it would be a little overly sugary overly sugary <laughs> but it wasn't it was very melt in your mouth almost salted pecan pie filling with cream cheese-esque say no more okay <laughs> She says, I hope you try this different take on a Thanksgiving dessert. Girlfriend, we are trying it and I am so excited about it. This one's also great because it's not time consuming at all. Very easy. And you could also make this for like any holiday party, almost like as an appetizer. So save this one whenever you need something in a pinch. Okay, so first we're gonna make our like cream cheese filling. So you're gonna do one eight ounce package of softened cream cheese. And mine's like really softened. <laughs> it wanted to stick over here to the package one cup of powdered sugar and then half of a container of thawed cool whip and then we're just gonna blend this together now this is already like good enough to eat okay you can pretty much dip anything you want to in that it's gonna be delicious but we're just gonna set this aside while we make like our salted caramel pecan concoction now for this like brown sugar um buttery pecan topping glaze that we're going to add onto our cream cheese mixture you're going to want to like start this low and slow don't turn your heat up too high because you don't want to scorch this it's almost turning into a caramel except for it's not caramel but it's going to be like just a silky buttery smoothness that you're looking for you just don't want to burn this you know what i just realized what i'm a little bit slow today on on things but this is actually just like a uh, pecan pie exactly. filling. Exactly, like yes. It, it's like literally the filling almost. We're putting the filling of the pie on top of our cream cheese layer, mm -hmm. which is like the cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, 
I cannot wait. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna add about three tablespoons of butter. Now next you're gonna need to get you some K-Row syrup. I have to say, I don't think I've ever actually cooked with K-Row. Am I even saying this right? Yeah, K-Row. K-Row. Um, this I'm the only thing I've used when making pecan pies. So you're gonna need one third cup of that. Just onion. watching that go in there feels good. Okay, one cup of brown sugar. Oh, the transformation already. I know. It says an egg, but that just to me, I, the egg's gonna cook in there. Well, it goes in the, uh, an egg goes in the pecan pie filling too, though. Okay, about a tablespoon of vanilla. I am concerned about this egg. The egg to me seems very strange. It's gonna cook. I know, right? Like, I do not understand. When, at what point in the process did she put the egg in? I don't know, we're adding it in. Oh. All right, I'm just Is this not weird? Absolute room temperature egg. That's, okay. that's the secret here. Okay, well let me just tell you, I forgot to hit record, but I went ahead and kind of whisked my egg together and then we poured it in like basically on no heat at all. Stirring immediately. Yeah, we don't have scrambled eggs, but. I was, I was. But he was whisking. I was moving so fast, but I think the key when, if you're recreating this, definitely make sure your egg is like, you know, as close to room temperature as you can get it so that it's it's kind of warmer. You and maybe cold. And maybe almost like take it off the heat when you put it in there so that you don't have scrambled eggs. But I think it looks fine. Oh yeah. We just have that one little tiny part right there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna turn this back up to about a three. Yeah, because you want to start kind of like bubbling. Now, our last few ingredients is a pinch of sugar. Is that sugar or salt? <laughs> salt. I think, we, I think this is sweet enough. Oh, that's funny. A pinch of salt in all of your chopped pecans. Now for the grand finale. I, I just, like, this is insane. Hmm. Oh my good life. Of course, my camera battery died <laughs> as soon as this was done. And I was like, I can't wait. I have to like let it charge, but I'm digging into this thing. Y'all, this is probably the sixth apple I've had. And the apple makes me feel a little better about eating it. <laughs> yeah, it uh, doesn't quite offset the, the sugar content there, <sighs> but. Do you see, I mean, it's just like. It's the holidays. This is a bowl of like holiday cheer, okay? My favorite part, the warm pecan. I, I thought the same thing. When you bite into that warm pecan and it's just like a little bit tender and like soft. Yeah. But still has that like crunch hold up. That little bit of like warming that they get once you <sighs> add them into that saucepan. It's insane. It makes it like a little bit toasty, I feel like, you know? Yeah, and then there's the, uh, the very slight undertone of that vanilla. I can really kind of taste the vanilla in there. Me too. But the cream cheese mixture on bottom. Yeah. Ugh. It's like a cream cheese cloud, basically. It is. There's not enough words to tell you how incredible this was and very easy again. Um, I think it's really good with apples too. Apples is the way to go with this. For this last recipe, I have like the best story to tell y'all. It is so sweet. And we actually have friends coming over tonight. So this works out perfect. We're gonna do like a Friendsgiving with them. And so we're gonna have a really good dessert to share. And this recipe comes from Lisa. Y'all, the story behind this banana pudding is just the best. She says, my mamma Lily was the family cook. Growing up, she did everything by memory or just thought it up in her head and went with it. She shared with me because I was her oldest grandchild and the only girl cousin that lived nearby. She loved for me to come over on Friday evenings and stay until Sunday night and cook with her for the family that came over after church on Sundays. Mamaw had four children. She had three boys and one girl. Her daughter Ruth passed away at age five from scarlet fever, so she lost out on being a girl mom, and I was the next best thing. This made me cry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she said... She loved church homecoming so much. She always wanted to bring something that stood out and made people go, 
Hmm. <laughs> she said, everyone's banana pudding is always so generic and blah, and I'm going to make one that will have them talking. And so she did just that, and people always raved about it. They named it the Fancy Nana Pudding, and it was on the table at every function and every holiday. She said that she wouldn't tell the secret ingredient to anyone but her. So Lisa knows the secret ingredient. We're mm. going to use it today. Uh -huh. Now, she did say that um, over time, Lisa has tweaked this recipe just a little bit. She says that she doesn't cook her own vanilla pudding using vanilla beans from scratch like her mamma did. Oh, wow. Which would be just incredible. She said that's not her specialty or she doesn't have that kind of patience. You know, I totally understand. I agree. <laughs> so she uses instant vanilla pudding. Um, but we're going to use the secret ingredient. This is going to be so good. And Lisa, thank you for sharing that story. It was just awesome. And it reminded me a lot of me and my mama. And I used to go over on Friday nights and spend the weekend with them too and mom and i would make biscuits and papa would grill me a steak and those are like some of my favorite memories so thank you for sharing let me cry <laughs> okay i'm gonna try and lock it up here okay <laughs> so she says to take two boxes of instant vanilla pudding mix but bunky went to the grocery store for us i think he's putting his own spin on this recipe as well would that be correct <laughs> you know okay so so what happened is um, i just got these out and i was like let, let me okay. let me tell you okay <laughs> okay <laughs> so what happened was I was going around and it was this was probably right beside where the bananas were. They had one of those, you know, like the barrel yeah. that's filled up and they had all those boxes of the pudding mix, right? Mm -hmm. And I was looking through and looking through and looking through and it took me forever to find the French vanilla one. As I had been sorting through all of the other boxes, there was that one that was banana cream. It's going to just bring more banana even flavor more, even more so i think it's gonna be good um, i like your spin on it like i think that's actually a great yeah. idea just a few things i want to tell you so this recipe calls for vanilla bean paste and funny enough if you guys watch my instagram you know that i have been on the search for this to make my own coffee creamer um and everyone has told me that you can find it at trader joe's so i went it is seasonal they only have it out for like the christmas season yeah um, last time we went to trader joe's they did not have it available they so. didn't so if you have a trader joe's near you or i've also been told that you can order it from amazon or maybe you you have a store where you know where to find it but anyway vanilla bean paste and then the only other thing i want to tell you is mamaw's fancy dinner pudding calls for lady fingers and we went to several grocery stores yeah searched high and low um just i just couldn't find them come across any around so we're here. gonna use vanilla wafers but if you can find lady fingers that's the actual way yeah. to do mamaw's banana pudding justice and I, and I think too you know being a banana pudding connoisseur right the lady fingers, I can absolutely see where they bring the the like differentiation where they make it actually better. So first step is to just make our vanilla pudding. So we're gonna add this to our bowl and then each one calls for two cups of cold milk. to layer it in this bowl not whisk it together in this bowl oh good hand me, hand me another bowl okay so now that our pudding is like mixed and you know it's thickened up we're gonna add to this half of a teaspoon of the vanilla bean paste and i just feel like using the vanilla bean paste gives it probably so much more flavor than just like vanilla extract mm -hmm. It might actually add what if you wait it adds like the little teeny tiny flex of, oh yeah you know, that that beautiful look good but just a tiny little bit more okay um i cannot wait to use the vanilla bean paste though like in other recipes like make my creamer to make cookies now for the secret ingredient to make the fancy nana pudding she adds in one cup of sour cream so this is the secret weapon to making the best banana pudding and this container is like almost full and it's about a cup, so I'm just gonna add what I have left in here. Now, last ingredient is half of a container of thawed Cool Whip. And then we're just gonna mix all of this together. This is gonna be amazing. Like, I've never made banana pudding. I know. But I have a feeling this is one of the best banana pudding for, recipes for there is. something that I enjoy so much and to have never I know. it, I don't know what we've been doing. You know, 
what? It did show all of those specks of the vanilla bean in there. Mm -hmm. And it makes it really pretty. Um, so now that we got our like pudding mixture concocted and it's ready to go, we're just gonna like build this and then pop it in the fridge. So she says like with the lady fingers that her mamaw would like kind of um put them all around the base of the bowl as well so you can kind of like see it in there. It makes a presentation. Yeah. So I'm gonna put my vanilla wafers as pretty as I can down there. Okay. <laughs> and then we will add bananas on top of the vanilla wafers and then like a third of our pudding mixture and then we'll repeat that three times. Okay, so I got to my top layer here, and what I'm thinking to make this really pretty on top, I think I'm going to crush, crush all these vanilla wafers to make it just look like it's like almost snowing vanilla wafers, you know? Mm. Is this gonna be so pretty? Love it. And there'll be some chunks in there, but that's fine. And then I'll put like a couple whole vanilla wafers on top. For sure. I think this will just make it really beautiful presentation always you know and then we'll pop this in the fridge probably like I don't know two or three hours and then we're gonna eat it but you're supposed to leave it overnight so if uh -huh. you can hold out that long you know let it sit overnight so after we eat dinner once our friends are here we'll taste test this and tell you guys you'll have like all of the opinions on this one are taste testers so i'm sure it's gonna be amazing but we'll let you know after dinner and the time has come to try the fancy nana pudding we had chicken mac and cheese boars and mashed potatoes all the things that we are actually stuffed yes. but there's always room there's for, always for, room. Room. for dessert room room that's right so we're going to dig in give us our taste test I'll mr b you do the honors I'll do the honors here some professional spoon work there that's right Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. That is like light and airy and fluffy, delicious. Oh, that looks amazing. Mm. For you, sir. Thank you. I didn't ask you how much or you do or don't want, so eat all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, banana pudding is cool because it's like a little presentation, you know, in a yeah, bowl. It's, it's a, uh, well, I mean, this is fancy. Yeah. This is fancy. That's true. Pudding, you know? You can. You can see the vanilla. The vanilla bean in there, I know. Yeah. Oh, so guess what, here we go. There's a secret ingredient in here. They don't know what Did it I is. Did I tell y'all what it was already? Is it the vanilla? No. 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 Okay, I didn't tell them, so that's good. So we're gonna uh, quiz them. Ooh, see if they can, so you oh, tell us if you get out. Nice, the pressure's on. I like that there's like a lot of cookies in here. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's, a very important part of the banana pudding in my opinion. Oh my goodness, first of all. That's really good. That's epic banana pudding. She wasn't kidding? Mamma makes some great banana wow. pudding. Oh my this goodness. is top notch. Dude, yeah. Okay. And if we can recreate it as well, I mean, I can't imagine how good, Dude. you know, Lisa's and Mamma's was. Mamma's, cause she made hers with, you know, it wasn't instant vanilla pudding. Mm -hmm. See, so I can't even video. imagine, yeah. Wow. And. She used lady fingers, you know, the like t like tiramisu. You know? Yeah. What What's the secret ingredient? Sour cream. Oh, oh really? that makes it creamy, right? Yeah, and like a little uh, bit of a tang. Yeah. So good. What I love is none of it falls flat. Mm. Like the cookies aren't hard. Like sometimes you get the wafers and that are a little like hard. Yeah. And like everything's like perfect consistency. Yeah. Mm. That's good stuff. So good. Just enough smudge. What? Okay, we ended up having so much fun with our friends last night that I forgot to wrap up this video, but I do want to be sure to tell you guys thank you so much for sending in these recipes. It is such a joy and a privilege for us to be able to make the recipes that are so special to y'all. And don't you worry, we're going to make more of them this holiday season. So if you still want to send one in, you can be sure to do that. I'll have the information in the description box as well as like to where to send it to. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us in the kitchen. I hope you and your family have an amazing Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I hope you try some of these recipes. I'll have them down below as well. As always, we would love for you to join our family. So before you leave, hit that subscribe button, give this one a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all. Bye.